All right, Mark, what are we about to do here? Uh, we're just going to baseline, probably do two runs, one just to warm him up and the tires up, and then we'll do a second run to, to figure out what our baseline CDA, the CDA we're going to move, we're going to work from for the rest of the day. Um, so first, first two runs of the day. And uh, how are you going to measure that? Okay. Uh, so there's a device here on the front that's measuring uh, environmental conditions, humidity, temperature, barometric pressure. It's also measuring uh, wind speed. Uh, then there's a speed sensor on the wheel that's measuring his speed. There's a power meter that's measuring his power. All that's brought together in a relatively complex mathematical formula and we can calculate a CDA from that. All right, Lionel, you've said time and time again that you're going to do aero testing. What? I've done lots of aero testing. It's not that I haven't done aero testing. I just I don't think that we did it in a thorough manner. And thus, I don't think that we can uh, take much from the data. If you, have, if you don't have good data, how can you make good decisions off of bad data? So... Um, that's fine. You know, I got frustrated. That's on me. I got frustrated with that process and then I just like, ah, it doesn't work. Who cares? And, uh, now it's a pressing issue. You know, had I, I've had lots of opportunities over the years to do this. In fact, with Mark, I tested in 2016 with Alpha Mantis. Like that must've been pretty early on in the Alpha Mantis kind of testing procedure. And, um, that was, you know, that's probably the best data that I have gotten since 2016. And I mean, imagine how I got into it hardcore back then and honed it over the course of 16, 17, and 18, like some other athletes did. Uh, I think I'd be a lot further ahead now if I'd had. But hey, you can't go back, and hindsight's always 2020. So, so here we are. We're we're gonna get some thorough data here. And uh, who do we have in town? We have Mark Graveline. How do you say your last name? Graveline. Gravelin. Gravelin. With Mark Gravelin. You know, the other piece of the puzzle, of course, is to be thorough in the testing procedure. And so we're not really looking to, like, Mark's not really like, this isn't like, uh, if, if I don't find something today, I'd, I'm not going to ever talk to Mark again, you know? So there's really no skin in the game here. It's more, if I'm already in the fastest position on the fastest uh, setup that I can have, it's all good. I just want to, I just want to know that. Right now, I don't have any data. So what, what I want is thorough data. And if it turns out there's nothing to be had, all good, no problem there. But first I need thorough data and Mark's job and what he's gonna help us with is to gather thorough data. So that's what we're doing. And you have lots of steps ahead. You're gonna go to a wind tunnel, do velodrome. I mean, the, 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 the future is bright. This. When you're starting from zero, you know, like very little testing data you know I think you, you to catch up you kind of got to do a lot of work and so I've been hesitant or not even hesitant just like Rented. not really willing to do the work and so now it's so pressing that I'm forced to do the work so I'm excited to do quite a bit of work and if we find nothing it's all good it's all good but I need to know Well, you did your first three runs. How'd they go? Good. Exactly what we had back calculated. Not we, Mark, had back calculated from my racing, from my last uh, two races, two or three, three, last three races, a CDA in the ballpark of 0.230. And then we come out here totally different environment totally different conditions everything's different cda point around 0. 0.230 so good good and consistent i think that's great starting point some consistent data but don't talk to me talk to him <laughs> if he wants to be spoken actually, if he wants actually, to be spoken to <laughs> actually very consistent with milton in 2016 wow that's fascinating too I would say 
instantly more powerful. Too. This was literally the position that I was like pretending to make. This is pretty darn close to it. The, the owner of the team, so there were a couple of messages that were flying around. Power sensor found. What'd you say, Ken Lionel? I asked Mark, if you're in the 0.230 to 0.240 range, sometimes even over 0.240, are you are you in the game? Like are you competitive? And the answer he answered no. I mean, you're not in the same game. That's a different game. We're you're, you're basically having to put out 20, 30, 30 35, 40, 40 yeah. watts yeah, more than 40 watts more than your competitors to go the same speed. And what have you been when you do your calculations from your previous races? Um, until, uh, for a lot of the races, I was over 0 0.240. And then, then I made some adjustments, and I, I have now had a few runs where I'm in the 0 0.230 range. So, still, you know, 30 watts off of the top tier. And triap, uh, cy cycles will be even higher than that, but... In, in triathlon. Anything feel different? Yeah. A couple watts quicker would be my guess. Two, three watts quicker. 0.230. And you did less watts? Yeah, it's harder. I, I'm not adapted to five hands. Yeah. I haven't rode five hands in years now. Five hands? Flat. Flat hands. Flat hands. It changes, it changes my whole, like, how I ride. Power production capacity. I've been riding hands since our first, since I started riding Canyon, I went to high hands. Yeah, so this is the the retro uh it's what i used to ride i still wouldn't say that's flat hands either no it's actually it's at still, it's at 15 degrees yeah i used to ride negative yeah. and then my hands down that's bad well that's how i rode my best bike splits all are down negative hands so for for many years you know the high hands became a real trend yeah. but for many years the sweet spot was zero to 15 degrees Just a slight negative so that I could grip. Well, the reason I liked to the negative, I remember, was because I felt that I could grip the underside of the bar, walk in. So it was just ever so slightly. Okay, you're redoing that test. What is it? It's low. Slow? Low. What was it? 211. I hope that wasn't. Yeah, we're certainly redoing it. Yeah. We're gonna do it 50 times, actually, if we have to. We're gonna do this multiple times because yeah. that that could very well be an outlier. And but of course, it's of course. But if I think a good coach and a good athlete looks at historical data, right? Historically, uh, when did you ride? When did you ride your best? Flat, flat hands. In the data that I went high hands, we've thrown that data out. So historical data indicates I'm just not powerful because it's going on five years. I used to be very powerful. I felt I'm certainly more powerful with flat hands. However, guys like Bingham say, find, find the fastest position. Uh, the body will adapt if yeah. you properly train it and give it an opportunity. I never had a position I didn't adapt to, and I made them all up. Like, they're all, they weren't informed by aerodynamics. So 211, so we gotta run that one again. <laughs> we have to run that one again. It's 20 watts quicker, 22 watts quicker than the previous run with the hands high. Er. That, a bit that, of stack reduction too on yeah, that. There, that could be an outlier. Absolutely. That's likely an, it's an outlier. It's likely are, an outlier. The odds are extremely high it's an outlier. What if it's not an outlier, I'm going home. What? what? Well, we're rerunning that test. Oh, what is it? 0.214. 
So the hands seem to have... That's two runs in a row within point zero zero three of each other. Yeah, that's our that, should, off. that show that it's, we're now 20 watts faster. Wow, just a slight tilt of the hands. Guy, I really do feel that, uh, like, I, I think a lot of people, see, the guys who know, know, right? The guys who know. Who know. else, who else rides us have always had their hands down? Well, the great, the coat. Yeah. He's always had his hands down. I'll tell you my personal opinion on that one. There's, um, there's a gentleman, probably one of the most aerodynamic guys, one of the most knowledgeable guys in the world, named Dan Bingham. And Dan started running, riding with very high hands on the track. And, and everybody did the, well, if Dan does it, it must be good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he's not the one that said everybody should ride with high hands. He just happened to do it himself on the track. And that people started copying. People started copycatting it. What about uh, Pringham Mantis, Floyd Lantis? So, so again, you know, it, it's very individual. Yeah. High hands work for some people, but if something works for 10 out of 100 people and you're not going to test, you know, don't do the 10 out of 100. Do the one that works for 90 out of 100. I think the moral of the story is the guys who know, know that it's very individual, right? It's very individual and you've got to do the work yourself. That's, that's the moral of the story. Like there is no... Oh, what's he doing? Let me just do that. Oh, he's fast on that bike in that position. It'll be fast for me. It just doesn't work like that. It doesn't seem to work like that. So if you don't go do the work yourself, which I don't do, it's all make-believe. All you have is the race data. And if the race data is bad, well, it probably gives you some insight into... You used to be good at the bike. You remember, there was a time when I was actually a good bike rider. So Those things are long gone. Recently, Lionel did something that I don't think anybody is doing enough of, is taking actual race results, picking them apart, and, and trying to correlate them back then to, to, to you know, test data like this. Because if you can't come up with the numbers in a race, if it's only during testing, it's absolutely useless. Yeah. You're pushing 360 in the modern era in a triathlon, in a long distance triathlon, and you're getting out bikes by two to three minutes, Either your power meter is broken or your CDA is really bad. There's no in-between. <laughs> what was it? It was, it was very good. <laughs> it was very good. Let's do another one. What was it? You're, you're, you're now under 210. Yeah, I, I could tell. You could tell. Absolutely not. You getting excited? No. No excitement whatsoever. Why? Because, Bert. Played this game for fucking 10 years. Half and 10 years. Uh, I need cold hard, like, if we could do this 50 times, I still wouldn't. No. Yeah. When would when will you be excited and satisfied? When I go to the race, I push 360 watts, and my CDA supposedly is .200, and I have the fastest bike slip by three minutes. That's when you'll be excited? And then I'll be like, oh, man, that data makes sense. That makes sense, okay. That makes sense. Right now, it don't make any sense. So what's wrong? CDA, power meter, what is it? Which part is it? I was gonna say 0.245. And we'll be back in the dark. Too bad, so sad. You're wrong. 212. That's how many runs have we done now? Replication of the data. Four runs. Four runs, different lengths. I'm not trying to, if anything, I'm riding, like that run I did off feel. So I didn't even do like, like I rode it as if I was racing. Very, very low standard deviation. That run is bang on. This is not, this is not data errors. You're, so, you're... so basically when we went hands up, well, we whatever, let's just move on. Let's just move on. Seems like hands flat is quicker for me for whatever reason. So so you, far, and let's let's agree. You're not flat. You're at 15 degrees 15 range degrees, of race. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then it's the next... it's moderate. Just one miles, right? Yes, yes. Now we got the bog helmet. Hey. Pac Man. Yeah. This might get us under point two oh oh, and then we just oh. sign me up for what's the next race? What's what Indian race is Wells next weekend? Indian Wells. <laughs>
201. We're almost at what we said. We were like yeah. literally the limit of where it was like, oh. You're doing that one again. I'm going into the race. <laughs> now I shave my arms. I'm going to be 1.198. So how many people have you seen go under 2.0? Uh, well, at the world tour level, most of the guys, you're not competitive. You're definitely not competitive. Like even 2.0 is, is a bad number at what world is, tour level. What is a good world tour number? Um, what, is that, what is an average world tour number for a, good, for a TT guy? So if you look at the size of the guys. It's related, and it's related to size. It is related to size and weight. Well, you know, yeah, size is related to weight and then, you know. So, you know, the, the tiny guys are in the high 1.6, 6, low 1.7s. Wow. Uh -huh. The big, big, the really good big guys are in the 1.8, 5s, 1.9s, you know, and they're, you got- And they're at about 180 pounds more? Some of them are pretty big, so I'm not sure. In, in kilos, you have a lot of like 82 kilo- 82, yeah, that's that's over 180. You know, these are the big guys that do the classics and yeah. sit on the front and do the lead outs and that kind of stuff. But yeah. so, some of them, there's, you know, I, there's one guy, 180.185, massive power, but he's, he's one of the best time trialists. Sure. But also remember, these guys aren't doing two hours on the bike. They're doing... Yeah. These positions di are yeah, for sure. They're doing maybe... Maybe 50 minutes, maybe, very often shorter than that. I would love to find a position that's 0.185 and see what, what actually is, is this a possibility? You know what I mean? Yeah. Has but, there been anyone in triathlon, do you think, who's went to that level of a position, tried it, and was like, oh, that's not possible. That's just not possible. I, Has I, anyone I, followed it that far? Do you think? So if I look at a guy like Magnus, uh -huh. um, you know, he's a big guy. He's quite tall. Uh, I suspect he, he's he's gone to to pretty extreme CDAs. Like I don't think he's a CDA of a you know of a, of a 60 kilogram guy. Of course. But I suspect he's he's probably world tour. Yeah. You know, I also know his aero tester. His aero tester is the best in the world. Um, you know, the guy is extremely attention detailed. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see. point one nine ish or in that ballpark. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. Plus he's got good power. Plus he's got, he's good, got good power. power. So yeah. now you're at, you're at like. Yeah. <clears throat> so if I had to put my money on who I think some of the more aero guys are, you know, def definitely Magnus for his size. Yeah. Yeah. Because with his size comes his. Of course, it is huge power. Yeah, uh huh, and increases the surf of the mass. Yeah. I mean, that run should be pretty fast. Hate to tell you this, I'm going home. What is it? We're under two. Yeah, I'm not going to like, you know. I'm but, kidding. I'm kidding. What was it? One nine eight. It felt like it felt fast. Okay. Even miles in two minutes now. Awful night. That was 198. That's 198. With a low standard deviation. So that was under two. Yeah. It can't be that difficult. Like, you can get it luck too, right? For sure. I feel like my whole career. I got, I've had luck, a lot of luck in the beginning. I think I had a pretty good position, a pretty good setup. I was, and it's just purely by luck. Like I just happened to have hands, you know what I mean? I had a when? lucky, in the beginning. When's, when's the beginning? Like when I first started really. Like I think I got lucky in that regard. And so I rode quite well, you know what I mean? In the beginning, I rode decently well. That was luck though, you know? And, and some people who haven't done testing, so some people will be like, well, I haven't done any tests and I'm riding really well. It's like, but there's a luck component, you know, because I've had so many different positions now where I'm like, well, I certainly I've rode better in different positions, but I never tested any of the positions, you know? So maybe you were, you were somewhat lucky pre 2016. Yes. And but although at that point your, your raw power, no one was optimized at that point. And your, and, and your raw power. I remember I was at Tromblon with you in 2014. 
your raw power just pushed you to the front. Yeah. Then 2016, you came to Milton and you did get tested. And I remember t testing. 230-ish. Yeah, 230-ish at that time. You know, so it's not normal you'd be a 230 today with the advances in technology. That skin suit is way better than what you yeah, had. Sure. The helmet's better than what you had. Uh -huh. The bike, the tires, everything is better than what you have. Sure. So, you know, back then it wasn't, it was, I remember Andy was very happy with it and, yeah. and as uh -huh. he should be. But that was all luck, right? That was, for the most part, it was luck and it could have. But you confirmed it at that point. Yes. You confirmed you were in the right position but at that point. it could have very well been. I could have done something totally different by chance yeah. by the bike I had or the information yeah. I had and not seen the results I saw. Yeah. That was the luck component. Just like I had the training pretty good in the beginning too. And then I went off and like tried a whole bunch of different things and like concluded how you did in the beginning was, was good. <laughs> Which I don't know if that's luck, but you know what I'm trying to say. So I think for this session, we've, we wanted to, we wanted to test these two hand positions, and I think that was successful. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a good day. Yeah, I, I think any day that we're testing is a good day because it's, I wasn't doing that. So it is a good day, but we're not gonna jump to any result, any conclusions here other than indication that a flatter hand position, and it's a different bike too. I mean, you can't underestimate that. Canyon has told me 20 times, you're giving up speed riding that other bike. We're not going to tell you what to do, but you're giving up speed riding that other bike. Canyon has said that many yes. times. And uh, so you were able to calculate Lionel's CDA from his last couple races, and what what were those numbers? So there were there were races. So I, I got back in touch with Lionel. I guess it was just post Oregon. Um, so the Oregon race and the uh, you analyzed all my races this year, every single one actually. Yeah. But they were all, my first ones were on the high hands uh, triathlon bike. Yeah. 0.24 ish. Yeah, they were between 2.3, 2.4, more towards 2.4. And, and then I switched to uh, more slammed, less, still high hands, but a slammed high hand. And I seemed to go down to 0 0.23, 230. 10 watts by slamming my front end, but still putting my hands up. But it made me almost equally less powerful by doing that. I almost lost, whatever I gained, I just lost, but I just pushed less power. It was like a net zero, Right. it seemed. Yeah, and if I remember well, uh, I think I calculated a 0.228 at Augusta. My business partner calculated a 0.23. We did it independently. And that's exactly what we saw when we went on the road yesterday on the with the bike, setup with the exact Augusta. bike, exact setup. Yeah. So on what he got today, how much faster would the position go today? Oh, to the best that he got today, he got he got 30 watts, so he got three seconds per kilometer, so he got 270 seconds, so he got four minutes and a half. So you like science? Uh, <laughs> nah, we don't believe in science. There is no such thing as science. I, no, this is all scripted. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not jumping into those types of claims.